Welcome to Specific Lab. Here recently we built a wishing well for our front yard and we wanted to add a wooden bucket to give it that added touch. So let me show you how I built this. Now for this project, we're gonna be using a bunch of cedar pickets that we had left over from the wishing well. Now for my project, I'm gonna be using a bunch of scrap leftovers, but you could probably get away building this entire thing with just a single six foot picket. Now the first step is I need nine of these pickets to be nine inches long. I have everything lined up so I can cut them all at once. And then I'm gonna cut one of the pickets down to 11 inches. I then set my table saw to about a 15 degree angle and I want the base where it comes in contact with the surface of the table saw to be roughly two inches away from your fence. Now we're gonna take the five nine inch pieces and the 11 inch piece and we're gonna rip them down on the table saw. When we rip them the first time, you'll have a 15 degree angle on this side. You'll flip that one piece around and get a 15 degree angle on the other. But you wanna make sure both of them are pointed in one direction. In other words, towards each other like so. Now once you have the first one cut, you should have plenty enough room to cut a second. And once you have everything cut, you should have 10 pieces at nine inches and two at 11. Now on the longer 11 inch pieces, we're actually going to make a mark about an inch down and you want it to be roughly center across. And then we're gonna use a three quarter inch Forstner bit. We're gonna drill some holes. And remember, it's always good to have a piece on the back side of your wood so that it doesn't blow it out. Now that I have all the wall pieces cut the length and drilled where I need to have them, I need to consider the base. Now I'm gonna be using, of course, some scrap here, and I want to glue a couple of these together and figure out the exact dimensions. But first, I do need to trim the side pieces. I need to notch them out just a little bit. For example, I did it here as a test piece. I need to notch it out so that the bottom will sit inside. For example, like so. And that way I can have a surface here and a surface here and it should be really strong when it's fully installed. Now I'm gonna be using a table saw sled to do these cuts, but you gotta remember two things. One, set up your blade so that it doesn't cut more than halfway through the thickness of your board. And also it's a good idea to set up a stop block so you know exactly where your limitation is. Then a good idea to go over all the edges with a sharp chisel just to clean up any of these burrs. Now right before we glue this up, it's a good idea to lay everything out just to kind of randomize the colors because wood doesn't always come in uniform. So if you notice, I come alternating some light and some dark and do it however you wish. And that way you have a good idea of everything lines up. Also, you need to make sure that when you're lining these up that the long pieces are going to be every sixth board. In other words, here's five, number six, five more, number six. And that way they should be opposite when everything is assembled. Now I'm going to be using some painter's tape to try and hold all these together while we glue it. Now I've laid out two strips of tape and if you notice I'm using the grid from the mat that is underneath this plastic to kind of keep everything straight. Same thing's true when I'm going to be adding the wood. I'm going to make sure everything's lined up primarily to one of these grid lines and that way all the wood should be relatively straight. I'm going to be using type 3 glue. I'm gonna put it in each of these grooves. It doesn't have to be perfect, and if it's a little too much, that's okay. It's better to have a little too much in these than not enough. And if you want to, you can always go in with a flat edge and wipe it on all the sides just to be sure that it's on every surface. Now once you have glue on all the touching surfaces, you have to very, very carefully start to pick this up. Roll it real gently until all the surfaces are touching. And if you can, flip it on edge. And once you have it up on edge, you need to push down on all the tops of the wood because you want to make sure everything is seated on your flat surface. And once that is the case, then you can continue to push it together. And I suggest getting something like a strap clamp and putting over the whole thing and that will definitely help the process. And if you want to be completely sure everything's flat, take some scrap wood and just gently tap each piece down. And at this point, once your strap is fully tightened down, you don't want to over tighten it or you could mess up the wood, but once it's fully tightened, you can then start removing their tape. 
And it's also a good idea if you have a lot of squeeze out, just to gently go over it. You remove that glue. Now just keep in mind that you will be sanding this down a little bit later. So you don't have to worry about too much if it's just lightly squeezed out, but these big clumps can be a challenge later. Once you have everything nice and secure, it's a good idea to flip it over and we want to wipe out all the glue residue right in here, especially where the base is going to go because you want to make sure there's nothing in there that'll be protruding and causing problems. Now while that glue is drying, I'm moving back to the bottom. We're going to assemble a couple of these together like so, but first I need to trim them straight on the table saw. Then we're going to add some glue on this freshly cut piece. Take our little brush, rub it in, and then we'll sandwich these two together. Then just use some basic clamps to hold them until they dry. Now that everything has had some time to dry, it is starting to take shape and look really, really good. At this point, you need to take a look at what will be the base or the bottom. You want to look at it closely to see if there's any ridges where you glued it together. If there are, you need to take a sander and go over and get it as flat as possible. If by chance you have a planer, it would make short work of this. So, let's do that. Then it's a good idea to take a sharp chisel and try to go over all these little edges to get it as flat as possible or, and at least remove these burrs that are in here. Now since we glued this and strapped it on the outside, there's a good chance that they're going to have different sizes of wood here and so the inside of this is going to actually be shallower than this and so we have a ridge. In my case, I'm going to leave this as a reference point, but you could always go back and trim this flat if you prefer. Now to cut out the bottom, we first need to trace out the top. When we put this on top, we gotta be careful. I have a couple knots here and here. I'm just gonna try to avoid those best I can. I should be able to with the way that's looking. And you wanna take a sharp pencil, carefully hold everything down, reach in, and very carefully start marking the sides. It's also a really good idea to make an arrow or a letter or a number on two corresponding parts so you know exactly where it goes back together. Then trim this out with whatever tool you'd like to use, but make sure to stay just on the outside of the line. Once you have it roughly trimmed out, take it over to your disc sander, and we're gonna try and sand it as close as we can, but be careful, because remember, some of these are uneven, and you don't wanna nip off those little points. And now for one of the most satisfying moments, a little test fit. Oh yeah, looks great. Now if you want to sand it, this would be the time to do it because you have easy access to the inside and the outside. But I'm actually looking at this and I like the little discolorations on it. It gives it more of an antique look to it. So I'm gonna keep it as is. Now it's time to add some glue. I'm gonna put it right along these edges here because this is ingrain sticking up and that's gonna absorb the glue initially really quickly. So we're gonna put some along here then put it along the sides and possibly even the bottom, then come back here and put an additional layer of it right along this ingrain just to make sure there's plenty there. Then let's make sure everything's lined up and let's put it in place. Remember, it's gonna be a tight fit, especially with the addition of the glue. And then using some additional pieces so you don't deform the top, make sure you clamp it in place. You just wanna double check the bottom and make sure it is nice and secure and then just give it some time to dry. Now at this point, it's pretty much done, unless you wanna decorate it. You can maybe put some trim, maybe paint it, or do whatever you want. I kinda of like just the natural state, and so does my wife, and well, she's gonna be the one that receives this, so of course that's gonna be her choice. At this point, we need to add some rope. I have some half-inch twisted rope. It looks almost antique-ish, so we're gonna go with that. So first off, you stick it through one side. We're gonna to have to tie a knot in this. Not, of course, does not have to be perfect, but we want it to at least look decent right near the end. And then you want to gauge, measure about where you want the other side to be. You can make this length whatever you want to fit your needs, and then cut it, tie another knot, and you're basically done. Just remember, the thicker the rope, the harder it is to get a knot in. Now once you have a knot in both sides, 
this type of rope and some others can easily come untied. So you might want to take maybe some hot glue or something and just put a little bit in here so that it'll be nice and tight and will not come unraveled. Otherwise, you could be in the middle of holding something or it hanging and it just fall. Now let's say you've glued everything together but you realize you forgot to make the notches in your wood so you can install the bottom. Well here's another way to do it using a router with a rabbiting bit. Now one advantage you do have using the router versus using the table saw is that this final edge is a lot smoother so it should be a little bit easier to insert the bottom. Now these simple buckets are relatively easy to construct. You can have fun with them, making a bunch of them. You can give them away as gifts, use them as decorations inside, outside, wherever you would like. Great thing about it is if you happen to have some of these scraps left over, you can also make little miniature versions, but that's up to you. So let's go see how this looks. Now we're gonna be hanging this bucket in our wishing well. I actually built this in a previous project. I'll put a link to those in the description below if you wanna check those out. Now, I'm probably gonna be hanging this from the side, somewhere around in here, just to keep it from blowing in the wind. If I left it just on the rope, the wind gets violent, this could easily swing around and break. So we figure we'll probably maybe put it on a hook or a chain or possibly even screw it to the side of this one column and leave it look like it's gonna pour out. In any case, this is a great project. If you want an old wooden bucket, some kind of an antique looking, this is a simple project. Hope you can get out and make one. Have fun building.